Emily was a woman who came from a family of wealthy parents who gave her everything she needed in life. Her parents were honest and upstanding despite their position, for they did not always have the job and luxuries they enjoyed today. They came from a hard-working family that struggled to build a better future for their family. Emily's parents came from Jackson, Mississippi. Her childhood and youth took place during the 1960s, and at that time, the adversities faced by people of color were quite evident in society. Her parents worked as servants for a white family. Emily's mother, Lizette, cared for the family's children, and her father, Thomas, was the property gardener. Emily's parents had to endure multiple humiliations because of their skin color. At that time, that state was going through a legal battle for the rights of African American citizens, as they did not have access to opportunities, good jobs, decent salaries, or spots in the best universities to become professionals. Lizette and Thomas decided to move to another city and start over, where they met a family who gave them jobs in their shoe factory. As time went by, the couple began to present ideas and new designs to the owners of the company, who were fascinated by their creative potential and started to manufacture shoes designed by them. In this way, the family managed to gain the respect of the industry and get to where they were today. Emily was very proud of her parents and their background. However, she rejected the idea that white people and people of color had to be treated differently and not have access to the same rights. So when she grew up, she decided to become a good lawyer who would seek to defend the rights of every human being. After becoming a lawyer, Emily dreamed of starting a beautiful family and sometime later, she met a judge named Eric. During a work meeting, they fell in love and decided to start a family together. After a few years of marriage, the couple longed for the arrival of their first child, and after several failed attempts, they began to worry because they did not know why they had not been able to conceive. They decided to consult doctors and specialists to help them find the answer. They performed different tests on each of them to determine why they could not conceive their baby. Unfortunately, the doctors had devastating news for the couple. Emily's womb was not fit to carry a pregnancy to term, so she would not be able to become a mother. The couple cried as their dream of completing their family with another member seemed to have been ruined from that moment. However, time passed and the family thought of other alternatives to becoming parents, so they decided to adopt a baby. After organizing all the adoption paperwork, the couple began visiting foster homes to make their decision. After several days searching, they gave a beautiful, light-haired, blue-eyed baby boy home. The couple fell madly in love with him, and after finalizing the paperwork, they took the little boy home. The family was overjoyed with his arrival and enjoyed every moment, but little did they know what they would have to face some time later. The people in the community where they lived looked down on them for adopting a white child, not a colored one like them. They began to make discriminatory comments when they went for walks in the neighborhood. According to their neighbors and friends, what they had done was something never seen before because they all knew the social conflicts that their country had gone through up until now and all the problems that could be caused by the decision that the couple had made. However, they were happy. They tried not to be affected by the negative comments they received. There was no black or white for them, only an enormous love to offer to this little one who had lost everything. They felt that the arrival of little John had filled the void left by the bitter news that they would not be able to have children on their own. Their son was all they needed, and they were grateful to God for the opportunity to become the parents little John needed. After some time, the couple decided to organize a trip to California to celebrate their son's birthday, who was about to turn two years old. The family was very excited about the journey. They wanted to enjoy some family time since, during the first years of the little one's life, they had not been able to plan moments like these, to see other places and enjoy some well-deserved days of rest. Emily's parents, who had witnessed the lousy treatment they had received from the community, disagreed with the family traveling to another city where nobody knew them, since it was already customary to see them with the little one. Still, it would be frowned upon for other people, and they did not want their family trip tarnished by discriminatory comments or unfortunate situations that would ruin their vacation. 
The family later enjoyed the beach in California with their young son. From the beginning of the trip, the couple had to put up with discriminatory comments from people and nasty looks. That afternoon, after arriving at the beach, the boy's mother decided to take him to the park, where they would have an experience they would never forget. A white couple approached them and asked where they had gotten the light-haired, blue-eyed boy. She proudly replied that it was her son. The couple was shocked and told Emily to tell them the truth. She tried to explain that she had adopted the little boy in another city, but they did not believe her and began to accuse her of stealing him. After a few minutes, they decided to call the police. As soon as the police arrived, they treated the woman like a criminal. The little boy was crying because he did not understand what was happening and could not explain that Emily was his mother, as he was very young. Emily began to ask them to let her explain herself, as she had to prove that she had adopted the little boy. However, the officers did not listen to her and took her into custody. Emily was allowed to make a phone call and told her husband everything that had happened. Eric was outraged to hear this and immediately took the child's papers and went to the police station where his wife was being detained. Upon arrival, he presented the papers to the sheriff. He explained that he was a judge in New Jersey and could get into serious legal trouble for unfoundedly detaining his wife. The officers apologized to the couple, promptly released his wife, Emily, and handed over their toddler. The white-skinned officers said that this whole situation was unusual and that they were just doing their job. The couple made it clear that the problem was both their own and society's. There were no such distinctions between one's color and another. It was just a family full of love and a child who had been abandoned, alone in the world. He was now happy alongside his parents without any concerns. Upon returning home, the family denounced the officers and won their case. They were fired for discrimination and learned a valuable lesson. The couple, for their part, continued to promote equal rights for all human beings, regardless of their origin or race, and to instill in their son values based on love, regardless of skin tone. Friends, this is the end of our story. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and share it. We'll see you next time.